Hello and good afternoon, everyone. Are we doing enough to drive the energy transition? Today, there are still around 770 million people on our planet without access to electricity. On the other hand, global warming is reality and climate change is one of the most pressing issues of our time. How can we solve this dilemma? How fast can we create impact on both sides? How can we, as technology providers and financial institutions, make our numbers and live up to the expectations of the capital markets? Our people and our planet need action now, but the energy transition will require investment, trillions of dollars of investment. So we all need to secure sustainable financing to ensure that this energy transition and its necessary innovations succeed. Now you might say, with COVID-19 still raging throughout the world, how can countries focus on decarbonization and climate change? The good news is, the pandemic has led to a different attitude towards the energy transition. Many countries are using their recovery plans to accelerate the transition towards carbon neutrality. In fact, you can see these stimulus packages offer an excellent opportunity to ensure that the essential task of decarbonizing the energy sector isn't lost amid the many other priorities. Developed countries have understood that large-scale investment is necessary to support and expand the development and integration of new and renewable technologies. At the same time, these efforts will also stimulate their economies. The situation, however, is quite different in developing countries where governments may not have the financial means to provide generous stimulus packages. The current severe economic challenges, along with the sharp decline in the oil market, can undermine the efforts of these countries to push an energy transition, widening the sustainable funding gap. There is no one energy transition, of course. Each country has its own conditions and priorities. But given the situation, we need substantial funds for all of these situations, and we need smart flexible and tailor-made financing solutions to support the unique needs of each country. My company, Siemens Energy, is active in more than 90 countries and around one-sixth of the world's energy generation capacity is based on our technology. We understand the unique needs of each country and can offer tailor-made, customized solutions to our customers. While some countries still lack sufficient energy supplies, others are looking for ways to upgrade their existing infrastructure. In many cases, we need to adopt interim or what we call bridging solutions, always with the ultimate goal of creating a reliable, affordable and CO2 optimized supply for all people. Natural gas can be very effective as such an interim solution. Gas turbines capable of running solely on hydrogen or a mix of fuel may just prove to be the missing link on our way to a new energy world. Let's take Egypt for an example, the most populous country in the Middle East. Five years ago, the Egyptian government was looking for a way to overcome electricity shortages that hindered the country's economic development. It was clear that a substantial investment was necessary to overcome this serious challenge. The government partnered with us Siemens Energy, to build the world's three largest combined cycle power plants. We have also arranged long-term financing at very competitive pricing. This project increased the country's electricity generation capacity by 50% and vastly improved the energy sector's environmental impact. And just recently, we signed an agreement with Afghanistan to establish the country as an energy hub in Central Asia by developing a modern, sustainable and cost-effective power system that incorporates the country's massive renewables potential. The country relies on electricity imported from neighboring countries and only 28% of its 37 million population, 28%, has access to electricity. 
In contrast, some other countries in the region are leading players in the global energy transformation. The UAE or Qatar and Saudi Arabia are looking for ways to make their infrastructure more digital and efficient and to optimize their transmission networks and integrate future renewable energy sources, including the very promising hydrogen. Three years ago, we agreed with our valued partners Expo and Doha to design and build a plant for producing green hydrogen. It is expected to provide the partners with important operational experience and ultimately make future green hydrogen projects bankable. We will soon be making the sunshine at night by producing green hydrogen from solar power and then re-electrifying it with our turbines. I'm very proud, very, very proud of the two landmark agreements related to green hydrogen that we've just signed in the UAE. The first is a strategic partnership with Mubadala, and this will help pave the way for the development of the green hydrogen economy in the UAE. And the second is a memorandum of understanding, allowing us to join forces with Mazdar, Etihad Airways, Marubeni Corporation, and Khalifa University to establish a green hydrogen demonstrator plant in Abu Dhabi. The plant will produce green hydrogen from solar power in Mazdar City in Abu Dhabi, which will then be utilized to run the passenger cars and buses in Mazdar Sustainable City. We will also be building a kerosene synthesis plant to convert the majority of the green hydrogen we produce into sustainable aviation fuel. The aviation industry will eventually fly green. Ladies and gentlemen, so despite massive sustainable investments, funding of all of these very innovative projects continue to be a challenge. Sustainable financing must be, must be an integral part of the future energy sector, but we have to do it right. I believe three factors are especially important going forward. First, we need to define a common set of ESG criteria that are accepted by all participants globally. We should keep in mind that ESG is not only about climate or the environmental impact of our actions. It also has a very important social component, such as how we ensure the safety and security of our employees. And it's also about governance. Capital must go only to places where strict fiduciary oversight is guaranteed. For us, I can proudly say this is in line with our ESG goals at Siemens Energy and only clean business is Siemens Energy business. Secondly, based on that common understanding, we need to ensure that all participants provide transparency and robust reporting that financing partners can rely on and that can be used for accurate comparisons. And third, we need to make sure that funds are allocated fairly and balanced and that all countries, no matter where they are in their energy transition, will benefit. ESG starts at different levels in different countries, and we know this, so we must ensure that defined criteria also allows developing economies to strive and thrive. So, ladies and gentlemen, sustainable finance is a key ingredient in the energy transition. Trillions of dollars are invested in ESG globally, but there is a large significant gap between where the funds are available and where they're required. So today, we all together have a unique opportunity to push change. As technology and finance providers, multilateral agencies, policymakers, project developers, and other stakeholders, we all together have a role to play so that no country is left behind and that all societies can flourish. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.